Hey everyone, welcome to our three-part bitmap to material tutorial series. In this series, we're going to take a look at how you can create your own textures in bitmap to material and then uh, import those textures for use in iClone. In the first tutorial, we're going to deal with the simple texture and uh, how to use your normal maps, uh, your ambient occlusion maps, the specular maps, as well as the diffuse maps, how you can edit those and create a more realistic looking uh, three-dimensional uh, texture. In the second tutorial, I'll show you how to create seamless textures for use on things like uh, planes or walls within iClone. And then in the third tutorial, we're going to talk about how you can uh, use the settings, various settings in iClone to maximize the results of your texture to make it appear uh, its most beautiful. All right, so let's get started with the uh, first uh, tutorial here. Uh, what I'm going to do first is going to uh, bitmap to material here. And I need to actually select a texture to drop in. So I have my texture folder here. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select this uh, lion's head here. And we're going to apply that to one of the uh, planes in my iClone scene there. All right, so I'm going to drag this over to the uh, drop a bitmap here window. We'll load in the diffuse uh, tweak there. And you can see this is our diffuse map right here. Uh, a little bit faded. Um, and you can see that this is the result uh, when the map is applied to a plane, in this case a cube. All right, so let's get on to the uh, parameters. Uh, we're going to adjust a couple parameters here. I'm going to twirl down the diffuse section here. And you can see in the diffuse we have our basic image editing um, um, parameters here. Uh, sharpness, brightness. Uh, saturation, all that stuff. If I sharpen, you know what to expect. That's the results it's going to have. Um, for this uh, for this particular diffuse map, the only thing I'm going to do in the diffuse section is actually just adjust the contrast a little bit. We're going to raise that a little bit to give us a bit more uh, uh, contrast, a um, bit more edginess to the, a bit more refinement um, to the edges there. That should be about good right there. All right, so you can fool around with that uh, depending on your own texture there. I'm going to close this down the diffuse properties there. And we're going to move on to the relief properties now. So I'm going to twirl that down there. And for this, we need to go into our normal map here. So I'm going to go over to the normal map. And you can see this is our normal map right here. Now, in the normal map, uh, sorry, in the normal parameters, you have a number of different options here. Um, you have a secondary option for a secondary uh, normal, as well as uh, you can choose the uh, output format as well. Um, for us, for our purposes here, we're just going to adjust the uh, normal strength. I'm going to show you what that does right here. Now pay attention to the uh, lion's head on the bottom as well as the normal map on the top. And you can see if I bring that all the way down to zero, the result that that's going to have. The normal just basically adds a lot of nice highlights to the to the cheek and to the hair of the lion there. You can see the results, the, uh, the eyebrows, and uh, that's what the normal map is going to do. So we want to pre pretty much maximize that out. Uh, to be honest with you, you can adjust the, uh, the the relief equalizer as well. If you want more fine details, you can adjust that. We don't really want to do that in this case. We'll just bring that back down. The medium details um, will have a very similar result. This is just emphasizing certain parts of your normal map. I normally don't like to have too much detail because um, it can get a little bit edgy um, and a little bit uh, pixelated on the, on the uh, certain edges there. Um, you can see we're, we're pretty good right now. Uh, the large details, you can adjust uh, a bit with a bit more freedom. Uh, you can see the result if I alter those right there and the very large details as well. Um, that's going to um, adjust the normal map in various ways. So this is the original right there and we're kind of basically uh, popping it out a bit more, making it seem more three-dimensional. And you can also pinch the uh, details as well if I do that for the large details. Normally you don't want to do this, uh, maybe, maybe in particular uh, textures you would, but in this one we definitely don't want to do that because you can see the distorted result it creates on the bottom there. So we'll just uh, leave that alone for now. You can also sharpen the normal map as well. Uh, it's going to create a look like this. Uh, we probably want to leave that alone. It's very similar to the adjusting the fine details on the relief equalizer there. Uh, normally what I like to do with those, I like to soften up the normal map a little bit just to kind of soften out those edges. You can see the result. Very, very subtle result, but it does, it does help from some angles as well. Um, you can see we got a nice, uh, nice smooth normal there now. All right. So let's, uh, let's close down the relief. And we're going to move on to the uh, shape recognition. So the recognition intensity creates low frequency shapes on top of the uh, existing normal map. It also adds a lot more depth to it as well. Um, this will only affect the normal output, so we're still in the normal map here. Um, you can see if I adjust the uh, recognition intensity, the effect that that's going to have right there. A really strong effect. Um, I don't want to have it too high. It looks a little bit too distorted in my opinion. We'll just leave it at about uh, 0.305 right there. Um, and of course, we want to adjust the recognition angle as well, um, according to the lighting in our scene. So our lighting is going to be from the top left. Um, so we want to basically have it from about here, um, maybe a 0.628 there. And that's, that looks good right there. And the normal shape recognition, uh, the apl this applies the shape recognition onto the normal map. Um, so we can adjust that as well, how much your normal map is uh, going to recognize. Very subtle effect. 
uh, with the uh, with the highlights, you can see a very uh, small effect there. Um, so from a different angle there. All right, and uh, the height shape recognition as well. Uh, that adjusts the uh, height map. So you can see the result right there. Um, we'll just leave that maxed out. And uh, AO shape recognition, we'll get to ambient occlusion in just a moment. Um, you can adjust that as well. Um, so let's move on to the specular map now. The specular map is uh, very important. So we'll move over to our specular tab here. And you can see that the uh, specular map here, uh, the image that we have right now is fairly dark. Now the specular diffuse influence here sets how the diffuse color and luminosity uh, affect the specular output. Um, so if you can see if I raise that, we'll get a lot more intensity, a lot more contrast in our specular map. And you can see the result on the lion's face on the bottom. If I bring that all the way up, you get some very strong highlights. Down, there's almost no highlights at all. So you can see the result right there. We want to basically leave this at about, uh, yeah, maybe 0 0.6. Uh, 0 0.606 should be good. And the specular saturation, that we don't want to fool around with that. You see what that does. We won't worry about that for now. And specular sharpen, we may want to sharpen that a little bit, just give a bit more light into our scene and add more detail to the highlights. Now the specular levels in, uh, those create strong uh, effects on your specular uh, results. If I lower the low in, you can see there's a bit uh, less specularity and uh, more, more shine as a result on our map. Um, you can see what happens if I lower the mids as well. We don't want to have anything too extreme. We'll leave the mids about midway. The highs, we can lower that. Um, you can see there, that's the result we get right there. So we want to have a nice metallic uh, gleam to the face there. You can see that... Uh, that does indeed have a nice uh, metallic look to it and really emphasizes those highlights. We want a bit more detail on it there. I'll leave that pretty high. And of course, you can mess around with this uh, whenever you have time. Uh, we can also adjust the specular levels out. This will have a big effect on it as well. You can see if I increase the uh, low, the result that that has, fairly signif significant, uh, the high um, correspondingly. You want less or more highlights, that's a very um, easy way to do it. All right, so you can see there, that's pretty much what we want. Uh, fairly metallic, um, quite a great look. And of course, the uh, the whiter your specular map is, the more uh, more shine, the more gleam you're going to have. So let's move on to our ambient occlusion map uh, here. Uh, you can see it's uh, very similar to an alpha, alpha channel map. Um, if I twirl this down, you'll be able to see the uh, properties here. Uh, the AO multiplied blends the ambient occlusion output uh, Within the, diff within the diffuse output. Um, so we'll stay at our ambient occlusion map for now. And you can see the multiply, what that does on the bottom um, to my uh, lion's head. And that's just really uh, significantly affecting the uh, diffuse map. If I go over to our diffuse map, you can see a similar result right here. That's what the result's going to have. So we don't think anything too dark. Uh, we can maybe leave it like about here. And that should be good. That looks about good. And we'll go back to our ambient occlusion map. We, we can see the results on the diffuse map uh, fairly nicely on the on the bottom window here. Um, the AO spread, you can see the result that that has. The AO spread, um, just adjust the spread distance of the ambient occlusion there. So we can bring that back and forth according to whatever look we want. And the AO light strength as well. Um, this sets the distance of the virtual light. Now, of course, we want to remember that we want to keep this at the angle um, where our main lighting is coming from. Um, so we don't see much about this unless I increase the distance, actually. So if I increase the AO light distance, we'll be able to see the result when I change the angle a bit more there. You can see that uh, it really depends on where your scene lighting is coming from. So that's very important when you're setting your uh, ambient occlusion, setting the angle there. You can also adjust the uh, minimum um, level as well as the maximum level there. There we go. It should be good. All right. looks like we're good to go. All right. So let's move on to the curvature. So the curvature uh, in the diffuse map basically sharpens the diffuse edges with the with the curvature data. Um, so this is our map right here. We'll uh, if I raise that up, you can see the result it has on the map uh, on the diffuse map rather. So let's move to the diffuse map, and you can see that uh, there's a fairly uh, subtle a subtle effect on the intensity of the lines um, on the face. So you can see right there, it's a fairly nice one though. So we can uh, probably leave that up at maximum value and the curvature intensity. Also comes into effect there as well. So let me leave that up about uh, 0.7 close to there. And now the curvature denoise um, basically removes the noise and the details from the curvature map. So you can see the result that, that has. kind of cancels out um, what we previously did. You can see right there that kind of just softens or takes out the uh, lines in the map. So we'll keep that for now because that's a, a fairly nice influence on the diffuse map. 
And we want lighting. Our, our last step is lighting here. So in the lighting, there's a lighting equalizer, which uh, equalizes the low frequency uh, luminosity changes across the texture. So if I uh, bring that up, you can see the result that it has. Um, probably something we don't really want to fool around with too much um, because we're going to have our own scene lighting in iClone. Um, you can also cancel the highlights. Uh, this softens the highlights in the diffuse map. So you can see the results if I bring that up or bring that down. You know, I probably want to bring that fairly far down because we want to get those really nice highlights on the on the nose and the eyebrows of the lion there. Um, the shadow cancel as well you can do the same thing. Just want to basically add as much intensity as we can to the to the lines in the lion's face there. And the diffuse to albedo is kind of important. This basically removes all the lighting information from the texture whatsoever. So if I bring that all the way up, you can see the result that that has. Uh, we normally probably don't want to do that because we want to keep our diffuse map like uh, nice and three-dimensional looking. You can see if I increase that, basically takes a lot of the three-dimensionality and the highlights away from it and bring that back up. You can see a nice, much better result. All right, now that's about all the modifications we're going to do to the parameters. Um, now, if you want to export your maps, you can either do that by right-clicking the individual maps and uh, say save as bitmap. I'm going to do it the lazy way, though. I'm going to actually go over to uh, export as bitmap right here. Uh, now, make sure that your uh, time unit is set to start and end at one frames because uh, we only want one image for each map. And uh, your base name pattern, you can probably keep that at default unless you have a specific pattern that you use. Um, so I'll just select, uh, deselect um, all the uh, outputs here. We're only going to use our ambient occlusion, uh, diffuse, um, normal, and specular maps here in iClone. All right, so let's uh, go ahead and export that. Oh, we want to choose our folder first. Let's uh, go into our tutorial folder here. Let's create a new one to be organized, and we'll call this one uh, Lion's Head. Lion's Head. All right, and we'll just open that up, select the folder, and then we'll export that. All right, so there we have our, uh, our four uh, bitmaps that have been exported there. So I'll move over to my uh, folder here, and you can see, indeed, there are our uh, texture maps that we've uh, exported, ambient occlusion, diffuse, specular, and normal. So let's move over to iClone now. All right, so here in iClone, we have our, our scene already set up here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to load uh, those maps onto these uh, two objects here, um, the uh, plane as well as the cylinder. So I'm going to select the cylinder first, and let's move down. There's a number of different ways you can import these maps. If I double-click the diffuse map here, for example, you can see that all of our uh, material maps have been set up here. I just uh, click on the diffuse map and load that in. You can open that up. Now, according to the alpha information of your bitmap, you may have a situation like this appear. Now, there's two ways you can adjust this. You can either just lower the strength of your uh, opacity map. Sorry, whoops, we'll go to the opacity map there. Uh, make sure your opacity map is selected and lower the strength there. And you can see the result there. Or you can actually just uh, select the opacity map and choose a, a white one instead instead of a black one. We'll just do that for now. And there you go. All right, so that's uh, imported in our diffuse map there. Um, now, what we need to do is actually uh, map this correctly to the cylinder. So we can go down to UV settings here. We'll select a cylindrical, and we can actually uh, align to the uh, Y axis. And we'll just apply that, or Z axis, sorry, apply that. You can see it's kind of stretched out there. Uh, what I want to do is uh, maybe I can just tile this. Um, we'll take, select two for the U option there, for the U and select apply and that'll have a nice bit nicer result there all right so let's zoom in on that you can see there's our nice lion's head right there all right so let's load in our other maps as well so we'll go up here and i'll select the uh, bump map now for this i want to load in the uh, the normal map here so we'll go to our uh, back to our tutorials folder here and we're going to load in our normal map and now check out the result when i load in the normal map we get a lot more uh, subtle detail on the face there uh, it's quite nice and that's with the strength fairly low I can even increase the strength even more to get the, to get a more defined effect. So you can really see the details in the face coming out with the normal map. It's really emphasizing the angles um, and the highlights on, on the on the face there. Um, and you can also adjust the lighting if you, if you forward slash. Uh, you can actually adjust the the direction of the lighting in your scene and see the various results on that. But we'll get more into lighting later. We'll just leave it there for now. And I'll bring the specular map uh, specular map right here. Now, the specular map won't have much of a result until you adjust your uh, specular values. So, for example, if I go down here and I increase my specular there, um, you can adjust uh, the balance between the specular and the glossy there to get your result. A uh, higher specular gives a much more of a metallic look and really emphasizes those highlights there. So you can see the result that that has fairly nice uh, highlights with the specular map. And you can also adjust, uh, for your specular map, you can also adjust the brightness and the uh, contrast up here as well to get a, a more uh, emphasized result there. The contrast will kind of add more uh, 
more highlights there. We, I like to normally keep the contrast fairly high up in my specular maps there. And we can see the lighting result right there. Fairly nice. All right, so let's uh, bring in the last map here, which is our ambient occlusion map. And we're going to um, bring that into the uh, blend map uh, slot here. So we'll just load that in. And you can see it just adds that extra little emphasis. And of course, you can adjust the strength if you think it's too strong. You can uh, bring that down. Um, it's fairly nice, though. So we'll bring it, leave it about halfway. And we'll just uh, zoom around here. You can see there's our uh, nice lion's head. Now that's perfect. All right, so let's uh, let's load in our um, the other lion's head on the uh, plaque here, and I'm just going to load in the diffuse map by itself. I'm going to load in the original diffuse map actually, um, just to show you, give you a comparison of uh, how much we've improved this. And of course, let's just um, uh, map this on a planar uh, z-axis here, and you can see there's the result. That's how much we've changed um, this particular texture uh, with a little bit of modification in B2M and uh, adjusting the values in iPhone slightly. So this is more what we want. It's a very much much more three-dimensional look. Uh, we can do the same thing to the other one. What we can actually do is I can just double click this uh, lion's head cylinder here and I can actually just save this material if I want. I can just go into the lion's head folder and we'll just save it as a um, lion head whatever and just uh, save that. And then we can go up here uh, to the plane and we can just load the material and we just select the lion head material and you can see that's the same material, only on a different surface. So you can see it depends on uh, really what, what shape your surface is. The results can be uh, can vary uh, slightly. You can see it looks much more reflective on the uh, planar surface as opposed to the uh, cylindrical surface there, uh, and much more reflective as well. Maybe on this one, we probably want to lower the specular map a little bit, uh, lower that contrast. So let's go to our specular here and lower that contrast a little bit, and maybe the brightness as well. You can see there, so we get a nice, nice result we want. All right, that's that's a bit better there. We don't want anything too reflective, maybe a bit more. You can mess around with those values as much as you want. All right, um, so that's basically it for this tutorial. Uh, in the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can create uh, some seamless textures. I'm going to apply them to the wall and to the ground. We'll go through the same procedure uh, just to review for you guys, and then we'll move on to how you can uh, adjust the lighting and the material uh, within iClone to create the, uh, the best effect possible.